We're looking at about a good 500 people right now. So a lot of people come early. We're at On The Rocks, you know, we start there. And then we're going to uh, Champagne Room. And then we go to Delos. And then we go to Buckhorn. It's fun, it's free, everybody makes friends here. I'll keep doing this forever if I could. <laughs> CPS Energy has a people first philosophy and we truly have a passion to serving our entire service territory. And that includes our chambers, our businesses, from small to medium to large. And we just wanna make sure that we are reaching every single person. We are proud to serve our entire service territory and that includes our suburban cities. So being able to join these chambers and be present, we're able to talk to our awesome partners that are in our suburban cities. We are not coming into companies and saying, here's your training program, scrap it, and let's turn it all into virtual reality. That's not the approach, that's the wrong approach. It's more about finding these use cases in the middle that you can apply virtual reality to really, really well and quickly, and they can train you to do something efficiently and well, and it's comfortable for you to wear. At the Tri-County event, what I'm gonna be presenting on is case studies around some of our customers and how we've deployed virtual reality training in an efficient way for them. I'm Lucia Dame Clark. I am the Bear County Clerk. We became the first woman ever elected in history here in Bear County as the Bear County Clerk. I ran for office because I knew the county clerk's operation as well as the district clerk's operation, and I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to improve technology and I wanted to bring services to the public. People think it's just about retaining records. No, it's a big responsibility. You're legally responsible as a clerk to make sure you preserve, archive, digitize the beautiful historical records of Bear County going back to 1699. Um, I got caught by the political bug kind of early on. So right out of high school, I started interning with several different legislators, um, first in Austin, Texas at our state capitol. Um, and then this is my first federal position. So I'm getting to know the federal government, which is fun sometimes and other days not so much. So <laughs> the free market right there in the name is key um, and really trying to facilitate uh, more choice and options for the consumer in the healthcare industry, whether we're talking about insurance, whether we're talking about care, which can be two, two very different things, but I love the free market approach of it. They're teaching physicians and uh, advisors, people who are brokers, they're teaching uh, members of the community, employers, that healthcare doesn't have to be as bad as it is, that there is another way. And it's really opening the eyes of those folks so that they can be brave enough to take the step and know that they're not alone because much of the fear comes from people not wanting to be the first at doing something. And so FMMA is, is creating a community that allows people to be brave and to do things that they wouldn't normally do on their own. Realizing how pervasive the problem of medical debt in this country, the accessibility, health equity, all these things that we're looking to solve with Lazo, that's exciting, that gets me up every day. I mean, we're literally creating an alternative healthcare system with this app. We've allowed ourselves to view healthcare as a synonymous word for health insurance. So the US, we have health insurance. We haven't really refined, if you will, healthcare. And I think direct access healthcare was really the answer to that. And through a web-based smartphone application, Dr. Mazzani really just had a great vision for what this eventually became in, in Lasso Health and the app. It is pretty amazing that at this point in time, you can have an app connected to your phone that talks to your watch, that's reading your vital signs and predicting you're gonna get sick before you even have symptoms. I, I think uh, healthcare has, it's wide open for where healthcare can go with technology. What first drew me to real estate is how every day is different. Real estate is not in the blood. I am the first in my family. I'm an approachable, down-to-earth mom that's involved with the community. Uh, first and foremost, I'm from here. I'm local. Success to me is having a good work-life balance, being able to help my clients find the perfect home or help them sell their homes. I make it as easy as I can for my clients. We are in the city of Cibolo at Ernie's Bar, and we're just having a little bit of a mixer for the Tri-County Chamber of Commerce. I help people with financial needs, planning, 
uh, small business planning, uh, retirement needs especially. One thing we all have in common is everyone passes away. I think people are taking the idea of a pandemic and running with it and understanding that, you know, life insurance kind of matters <laughs> sometimes. In the four nights that we're open, which is 20 hours, we can raise gross over $3 million. That just blew you away, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and it costs us a, a, a million to put it on, a little over a million, little over a million to put it on, and then the rest goes to the Conservation Society. But that's a that's a chunk of change right there that is uh, pretty impressive when you tell people, oh yeah, we had a little party and we raised uh, three million dollars. What?